All right, guys, so I stumbled across this video that is going viral that I want to react to that features rapper slash influencer Zuby, right? Uh, who is kind of big in conservative circles, specifically in the UK, uh, as I think he went viral uh, back in like 2019 for breaking the uh, British women's deadlift record. Uh, and <laughs> he broke this record uh, as a man but he was identifying at a, as a woman at, at the time. And he was identifying as a woman at, as a joke, right? To make a point about how uh, men have biological advantages over women and that, you know, somebody that's biologically a man, even if he identifies as a woman, he can easily break the British woman's deadlift record, right? Basically without even trying. So he put that on camera, okay? Uh, and it went super, super, super viral okay and i think that's how he initially got uh really uh famous but uh i think he's into like fitness and, and, and rap and he you know does more like conservative libertarian commentary commentating or something like that um but in this clip um he was actually on a british news channel and he was discussing uh black lives matter and i found his answers to uh the reporter's questions about black people being oppressed and blm supposedly supposed to be working for uh black people and working in the interest of black people because again black people are oppressed i found his response to these questions uh to be absolutely perfect and i want to highlight that so before i get in that i just want to let you guys know if you like my channel you want to support my channel you can do so using the links in the description below you support the patreon you support the paypal you support the merch there are multiple ways to support the channel if you would like to do so so without further ado, let's go ahead and play this uh, clip uh, from uh, Zuby's interview on this UK news channel. Take a look. I think it's very clear even from this conversation and all the conversations every time BLM comes up is that it is divisive. Mm. It's divisive. This is stoking racial mm. tension, not just in the U. I mean, it's crazy it's been imported to the mm. UK, um, but in the USA, it's exactly the same. You had cities on fire in 2020. There was so much tension. Multiple people got killed. Over 20 people got killed in the BLM protests and riots in 2020. So this started from one black man getting killed and then you've got another few dozen but getting Zuby, killed. But Zuby, some of these organizations, they'll say to you, but Zuby, mm -hmm. you are oppressed and we're here I'm not to oppressed. help you. I'm but not this, oppressed. They're not there to help me and they're not helping me. They're not helping black people in general. They are helping themselves. The way you stop racism is by people not being racist. It's not by calling everyone racist. It's not by making false and unkind accusations against everyone. It's not about virtue signaling and putting up hashtags and black squares and kneeling down. It's about simply treating people as equals. That's all And do it you takes. buy into, in this day and age, because there is a suggestion that in the here and now, in this day and age, that many aspects of society, whether it's institutions or whatever, are fundamentally racist. Do you think that that is the case in today's society. I don't think it's the case and I don't think it's useful. These terms, systemic, structural, institutional, racism, they're, they're popular because they're these apparitions, they're these ghosts where you never need to define anything or be precise. You just say, oh, the system is racist, the institution is racist. You can just throw it out there and people just nod and cheer, but you can't fix a problem like that. If you want to deal with individual instances of racism, you need to be able to identify them, highlight them, and then you can deal with that individual issue. If you just say, oh, the whole thing, the whole thing, the whole system, the whole country top to down is racist, then that doesn't help anyone apart from the activists. Guys, don't y'all just love how <laughs> that woman on the panel with him uh, said that, but Zuby, the organization say that you're oppressed because you, you're black, <laughs> right? And at first when I listened to that clip, I thought that maybe she was saying that, but then when I listened to it again, I said, okay, Maybe she's just playing devil advocate here, right? She's not playing the uh, guilty white liberal role uh, that you see so often, right? Uh, where you have, you know, a white person try to tell black people that you're supposed to think that you're oppressed, right? I don't think that that's what, what she's doing, okay? Uh, but with that being said, what this man just said was 100% facts, right? He said it in the most concise way possible, right? He really did, okay? But I want to expand on it because, again, uh, that end statement there, right? You're not helping anybody, but the activist is really, I think, the key uh, takeaway here. Because we've done stories about this, guys. I mean, I've talked about this a lot, especially recently. Uh, BLM, right? The uh, Black Lives Matter national organization 
Uh, they claim that, hey, you know, we're for black liberation and we're for helping out black people because black people are oppressed. But the only people who have benefited the most from the tens of millions of dollars that have went to that organization are the so-called activists, right? And we're not even talking about the ground level activists. We're talking about the uh, founders of the organization, Patrice Cullors and her family members and all the other uh, lesbians running that organization, right? Those are the only people that have benefited from the millions of dollars that have come in. But they're supposed to be helping out black folks, right? But when you open up their books, uh, again, a majority of that money that they spent, they spent it on mansions, they spent it on themselves, they spent it on things that really don't have anything to do with helping out the black community. Because it's not necessarily about helping out black folks. It's about them enriching themselves off the backs of dead black men, off the uh, tears of guilty white liberals. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. And it's not just them. It's not just the activists. Look at the Democrat Party. Right, the Democrat Party virtue signal all 2020 about how much they love black folks and how Democrats are working in the best interest of black people, okay? But lo and behold, when Democrats take power, what have they done for black people? They haven't done anything. They haven't even passed police reform, okay? Something they've been working with Tim Scott on. Oh, I can't come to the agreement with Tim Scott. He's not radical enough. <laughs> he doesn't want a federal takeover of policing, so therefore, that's why we can't get it done. Again, we're talking about an issue here that Republicans are willing to work with the Democrats on. They just don't want to be extreme about it, right? Democrats are like, nope, because you don't want to be extreme, we can't do it. So again, what have they done? They haven't done anything, right? Besides a holiday, okay, and a Supreme Court justice that, you know, is there for representation purposes, right? They haven't done anything. You got a black woman, LGBTQ press secretary. How about that, right? Because representation matters, guys. That's doing stuff for the black community, right? Again, guys, it was always about just getting the vote, right, for the politicians. Just like for the so-called activists, it was always about getting the money, right? That's what it was always about. And then when you go to talk about this whole systemic racism thing, uh, they can never point to what is a systemically racist law or policy that needs to be changed. They can never point one out. They can never name one, right? But the whole system's racist. Racism is everywhere. But you cannot point out a systemically racist policy or law because if you can point one out i think we can examine that law or that policy and say hey you know what yeah yeah this is wrong we need to change it right and even when they can define a law systemically racist like for example ember x kendi he tries to do that he says that any law or policy that disproportionately uh negatively impacts black people is systemically racist right that's what he says uh, however, when you bring up certain policies that seem to be supported by the left, uh, like, for example, when it came to the vaccine mandate um, that disproportionately affected black folks because a lot of black people were vaccine hesitant. They were more disproportionately va vaccine hesitant than other groups of people in this country for various reasons. Um, when you bring that up to him and you ask him, is this law or policy systemically racist? All of a sudden, this guy's brain melts down and for whatever reason, uh, he can't really answer the question. The question is, like, and I think I'm understanding it correctly, that, like, any policy or potential policy that would have a disparate racial impact is a racist policy. So, if that's correct, then would vaccine mandates that disproportionately affect people of color, would that be a racist policy? Hmm. So, I... There's two different sort of measures currently. Uh, one measure finds that white Americans are most likely to be resistant to getting the vaccine. And then there's another, there's other data that finds that, that black and Latinx Americans are the least likely to be vaccinated. And so as a result, it's hard to say. Uh, uh, but what I will say is to me, the actual problem isn't the vaccine mandates. The actual problem is when you actually study those, particularly black and Latinx people who aren't vaccinated, you actually talk to them, we're finding that uh, a lack of accessibility to the vaccine for a whole host of reasons is actually leading to them having a lower rate, while with white Americans, it's more or less the result of their political ideology. Yeah, so this is a guy whose whole career 
was built on the idea that, well, any policy or law that disproportionately negatively impacts black people uh, is systemically racist. Uh, all of a sudden, when it comes to the vaccine mandate, which is a leftist policy that, again, this guy supports because he's a leftist, because of his political ideology, all of a sudden, it's hard to say whether or not that this is systemically racist, even though this does negatively and disproportionately impact black people, uh, because black people are being systemically discriminated against due to the fact that black people are more vaccine hesitant because of the history of this country in regards to uh, testing out um, medical uh, experiments uh, on black folks, right? Something he should be well aware of, okay? But again, all of a sudden, when it comes to the leftist policy and them supporting something that by his definition is systemically racist, I don't really know, right? I'm not sure about that, right? Again, it, it also reminds me of uh, how black people went out here and voted for uh, Joe Biden, despite the fact that, again, all the woke black people say that, well, what Joe Biden did in the past when it comes to the crime bill and the drug bill in the 1980s and 1990s, well, that's systemically racist. Right. He's largely responsible for so many black men being locked up in this country. Well, if he's responsible for all those systemically racist policies, then. Why in the world did you vote for him? Right. You went out there and voted for a man that is responsible for the systemic racism that you, that you talk about. Right. Or what you claim is systemically racist. Right. They also cite other policies like um, redlining. OK. And housing discrimination. Well, that came from FDR. That came from the New Deal. That came from a Democrat, one of the progressive icons in this country, right? All the systemically racist things that Democrats and people on the left complain about seems to all come from Democrats, right? They all come from Democrats. That's the crazy thing about it. But again, fast forward into 2022, I'm just not buying into this argument that so-called systemic racism, even if it does exist, is what's holding black people back. It's not holding black people back. What's holding any individual back in this country, right? We're talking about the United States. Or maybe even the UK, right? I haven't been to the UK. I don't know much about the UK. Uh, but I imagine since it's a developed country, uh, that it, it's probably like this as well too over there. It's probably not too far off from America. Um, what's holding any individual back, regardless of their race or their skin color, is themselves, right? It's the effort that they put in to want to be successful, right? Are you working hard? Are you working smart? Are you taking risks? If you're not doing those things, then yeah, you're probably not going to be successful. Yeah, there are going to be some people in this country that are going to be born into bad situations, but that happens whether you're black or white or whatever skin color. You may be born in a bad situation. You may be born in a situation where you have one parent in the household. You may be born in a situation where uh, you were born into poverty, right? You may be born in a situation where, um, you know, hey, you're growing up in a violent neighborhood. Again, that applies across the board. That's just not something that only black people have to deal with. But despite those situations, again, you do live in a society where the opportunity is there to dig yourself out of those holes if you apply yourself. We have all the knowledge in the world at our fingertips, all the opportunity in the world at our fingertips. And I don't think that there's any laws on the books uh, that is holding anybody back nowadays, right? Regardless of your race or your skin color, it's not holding you back. If anything, what the woke revolutionaries are trying to implement nowadays uh, makes it a lot easier for so-called people of color to uh get ahead right makes it a whole lot easier for example like affirmative action you don't even have to be as good as let's say you know uh other people like you know asians to get into ivy league universities to get into good schools to have uh prestigious names on your resume you don't even have to be as good anymore so again, don't sit here and complain to me and say, oh, well, we lack opportunity or that, you know, uh, everything is systemically racist and everything is against me. No, at this point in 2022, if you're not successful, it's only because of your own individual effort. That's it. That's it, period. But again, you can't make money off of that, right? You can't make money and raise millions of dollars and get votes telling people that, hey, you know what? You're responsible for your own outcome. Nobody else. Hard to make money off that, right? Hard to make money off that. So, uh, again, I, I thought what Zuby said here was um, great, and I just wanted to expand on it because, I, you know, I have my own thoughts on what he was saying. Obviously, I agree with him. And uh, I, I should definitely listen to a lot more of his, um, you know, his podcast and his talks or whatever. Um, because, again, I, anytime he does speak, anytime I, I listen to him speak, I, I do think he makes some great points. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.